Welcome to the New York State Office of Cannabis Management's eGrants Registration Training. This video will walk you through the process of locating and viewing grant opportunities listed on OCM's eGrants system. You'll learn how to access the Opportunity Portal to search for and view details for upcoming OCM grant opportunities and how to sign up to be notified when new grant opportunities are made available. This video will also provide a registration overview which will show the process of registering your organization for the eGrant system in order to prepare your organization to log in and apply for OCM grants. We'll cover the initial login to show you how to log into eGrants for the first time and how you would set up your organization information and other users. And finally, you'll be provided with support and assistance resources that can help you along the way. The OCM eGrants system is located at ocmegrants.intelligrants.com. The ability to search for and learn about available OCM grants is open to anybody. You do not need to log in with a username or password to simply browse and search for grants and to learn about OCM grant opportunities. Clicking on the Opportunity Search link at the top left of the screen will allow you to view and search for available OCM grant opportunities. Opportunities can be searched for in a variety of ways, including by name, keywords, and availability dates. The available from date is the date that the potential applicants can begin submitting applications, and the available to date is the last date that applications can be initiated. This is often, in most instances, also the due date for applications. You can also narrow down your results by searching for specific organization types. Checking any of these boxes would provide results for grant opportunities that are open only to these specific types of organizations. You can also simply click the search button without entering anything in the search fields and the results will show in the bottom here showing all grant opportunities that are available in the system. Notice I've clicked the search button and the results show an opportunity called the Community Reinvestment Program Grants. I could click on this link to find out more information about it. I could also have searched for a keyword such as community and click the search button to locate that same grant. Clicking on the link will pop up the Opportunity Details page, which will give more detailed information about the grant opportunity. This page will include details such as the due date, the availability period, who you can contact if you have questions, it will give an overview of the opportunity, and it will provide a link to the RFA or RFP. Organizations and individuals can also click on the Sign Up to Receive Updates link, provide your email address, and check the box that says you consent to being emailed about available opportunities. This will sign the email address up for alerts whenever a new grant opportunity is posted in the system. If there is a grant opportunity that is available or coming up that your organization would like to apply to, your organization must first be registered in the eGrant system. You can find the registration form by clicking on the login button or going back to the home page and clicking the link Head of Organization, Register Here. Registration is done by the head of your organization, such as the CEO, Chief Operating Officer, or someone with a similar title. The head of your organization will need to click this link to initiate the process. Notice the pop-up form is called the Head of Organization Registration and requires certain fields to be filled out. And anything with a red asterisk is a required field. The head of your organization will need to fill out their first name, last name, title, your organization's employer information number, the EIN, your organization's legally incorporated name, and its address. They will also need to provide their email address and their phone number, and they have the ability here to provide a username that they would like to log in with and a password they would like to use. You must also select the entity type, the type of organization that you are, and select if your organization is a sectarian entity. A sectarian organization is defined as one which is affiliated with a particular religious group a non-sectarian organization has no religious affiliation. In order to be registered in the eGrants system, your organization also needs to be registered in SFS, the statewide financial system. If your organization already has an SFS vendor or supplier ID, you can enter it here. If you don't know the ID, or if you don't have one, you can leave that field blank. Once your registration request has been submitted, the grants management team can research your organization and either locate your SFS vendor ID or provide you with more guidance to walk you through the process of obtaining a new SFS vendor ID. And finally, you will need to select if your organization has previously been registered in the Grants Gateway system. 
Once the head of your organization fills out this form, they will agree to the attestation here that states that they affirm they are the principal officer, and then they will click the register button. This will send an email with registration information to the grants management team, and the team will process your registration. This process may take three to five business days, so we do urge you to start the process as soon as possible. Next, we'll talk about logging in. Once your organization has been registered, you will receive an email from the grants management team letting you know that you can now log in to the Office of Cannabis Management's eGrant system. The head of your organization will log into the system using the form on the right, entering the username and password that they provided. In this video, I've switched to a different screen showing our test environment. So you can see there's another field here called Announcements. That will be populated on the live site as well if there are any announcements that OCM would like to make. So the user will enter their username and password and click Login. And now I'm logged in as the head of the organization. Once you log in, you'll be presented with a user dashboard, which is separated into sections. The My Task sections is where you would keep track of activities that are assigned to you. Since this is the first time I've logged into the system, I don't have any tasks yet. But if I was to start an application, I would see that application as a task in the My Task section. In the bottom right, we can see any announcements posted by OCM that we may want to review. And in the bottom left is My Opportunities. This is where you'll find grant opportunities that you can apply for, but that is the subject of another video. However, if I clicked on the Community Reinvestment Program Grants link, I would be able to start an application, which would end up in the My Task section of this dashboard. For the rest of this video, I will discuss what the head of your organization will need to do to verify their profile and then what needs to be done to add and manage other users for the system. The head of your organization will need to click on their name in the top right corner and note that there is a drop down that allows them to access the profile, messages, dashboard, support, or logout. In this case, we're going to click on profile and we can verify our organization and personal information. The person information here again is for the head of your organization. They may need to change an address or phone number or email address on this page. They can make any updates they want to. They could also change their password. And on the top right, they can click the Save button. Clicking the Save button will save the page. The head of your organization may also need to update the organization information page. Again, this page allows for updates that can be made here in each field, and then the user would need to click the Save button. Once the head of your organization's profile has been completed and the organization information has been completed, you may want to start adding organization members, or at least one member. Click on the Organization Members tab and you can see the list of members, which in this case only includes me, John Doe, the head of the organization. Notice I have the role of grantee official, and there are different roles that can be assigned in the system. To add a new user, the head of your organization would click the plus button here and select the option Add New User to Organization. At this time, we do not suggest that you click the other link, which is Invite Existing User to Organization. So again, please click Add New User to Organization. This will pop up a Add Person form and allow you to fill out information about this new user. It includes standard information such as their name, title, their address, their phone number and email address, and which username and password you'd like to assign to them. Also note that you will need to assign a role to this user. The grantee official role is the most powerful of grantee roles. It provides the ability to manage organization members and their corresponding roles. It also allows the user to initiate, complete, and submit grant applications. And downstream, this role can manage contracts as well as initiate, complete, and submit financial, compliance, and progress reports. Heads of the organization are strongly encouraged to assign this role sparingly. The grantee administrator role is also a powerful role. Although this role cannot manage organization members, it can perform all other functions available to the grantee official. So if you do have somebody who you would like to be able to start, save, and submit grant applications, this is an ideal role for that person. There's also the role of grantee staff. This is a user that cannot manage organization members, cannot initiate or submit grant applications or other downstream transactions. However, the role does allow the user to assist in the process of completing applications. 
The role of grantee fiscal is limited to functions associated with downstream transactions, specifically requests for reimbursement against approved contracts. This is not a relevant role to applications. And finally, grantee viewer has very limited access and it is view only. As you can see here on the form, you can also set up active dates for the user. These are optional fields, but if you entered an inactive date, the user's access would end on that date. You will set up the user's username and password, confirming that password, and then click the Save button, and the new user will be added to the system. Once the form has been filled out and the user has been added, it's a good idea to contact that user to let them know that they now have an account in the system and what their username and password is. For best practices, it's probably a good idea to do this verbally or to send separate emails with the username and password. Head of organizations are strongly encouraged to develop internal controls related to eGrants access for their employees. At minimum, these controls should include regularly scheduled reviews of existing access, level of access, and continued need. In the event of staff turnover, retirements, or simply changing organization dynamics, organization members' access and roles can be updated as necessary. Another item that the head of your organization will want to attend to is the Additional Addresses section. This section has two required addresses that must be entered at some point. As you can see, the Payment Address and the Additional Mailing Address both have red stars making these required fields. You could check the box to denote that it is the same as the primary business address, or you can type your address, city, state, zip, and county in. You can do the same for additional mailing addresses. And then finally, at the bottom, there's a field for other additional addresses, which is not required, but note the dropdown where you can select the type of address. If you fill it out and hit Save, you can then click the plus button to add yet another additional address. So again, the payment address and additional mailing address fields must be filled out at some point. So it's a good idea just to manage it now and have your head of the organization fill them out while they're already on this page anyway. There is another requirement that not-for-profit entities should be aware of, and that is pre-qualification. Pre-qualification is a process where not-for-profit entities provide the state with certain required documents and answer questions related to the organization's policies and fitness. This is a requirement only for not-for-profit entities, so municipalities, for-profit entities, individuals do not need to worry about it. However, this is one of the reasons why it is important to also be registered in SFS as the pre-qualification application system exists in SFS. Note that grant proposals from nonprofits that are not pre-qualified in SFS at the application due date and time will not be evaluated. You can work on both the application and pre-qualification at the same time. However, an application will not be accepted if the organization is a not-for-profit and not yet pre-qualified. There's a wide range of pre-qualification resources available on the Grants Management website at grantsmanagement.ny.gov. Nonprofit applicants are encouraged to review the following resources. The New York State Pre-Qualification Manual, which is found on the grantsmanagement.ny.gov website. The Grantee User Manual, which is found in SFS Coach within SFS. You can also contact the Grants Management Team for up-to-date guidance and information about live pre-qualification webinars. As mentioned before, there is a wealth of support and assistance available to organizations interested in applying to grants. If you require assistance regarding registration, all OCM eGrants system registration questions should be directed to ITS Grants Management at grantsmanagement at its.ny.gov. Please include OCM eGrants registration in the subject line. Pre-qualification questions can be addressed by contacting the SFS Help Desk. They can be emailed at helpdesk at sfs.ny.gov or called at 518-457-7717.